From this hilltop in South Ossetia, you can see Georgia in the distance. South Ossetia is part of that country, according to most of the world's governments, including NATO countries. But it is also part of a growing network of separatist territories on Russia's southwestern frontier, breakaway movements backed by the Kremlin forming a shadow empire by the Black Sea. I'm Anton Troyanovsky, Moscow bureau chief for The Washington Post. I recently traveled to South Ossetia. Mine was a rare visit by a Western journalist into this battle-scarred enclave in the Caucasus Mountains. After Russia and Georgia fought a war here in 2008, Russia recognized the region as independent. The official line in South Ossetia is that it was a war of aggression carried out by Georgia, and many people here speak of Russian President Vladimir Putin as a savior. At a memorial, charred cars sit rusting among the weeds, meant to remind South Ossetians of that war, a place where locals say South Ossetian civilians burned to death inside. On the streets of Tsinvali, pockmarked buildings stand as more subtle monuments to the violence. This was the old Jewish quarter, before war made it unlivable. Dated references and faded posters attest to the near total isolation this territory has endured. South Ossetia's ties to Russia today are strong, politically, culturally, and financially. Ossetians largely follow Orthodox Christianity, but not the Georgian Orthodox Church that's dominant in Georgia proper. They speak both Russian and a native Iranian language. Travelers enjoy salty cheese made in the fashion of a centuries-old South Ossetian tradition, and drink naturally carbonated spring water. It's salty with a bit of a sulfury aroma, but refreshing. Financially, Russia is the key benefactor. It is the only world power that recognizes South Ossetia's sovereignty. Of South Ossetia's $120 million budget revenues last year, $110 million came as a handout from Russia. South Ossetia, in turn, recognizes the Donetsk and Lugansk People's Republics. This enables it to act as a conduit, shuttling funds between the disputed territories in eastern Ukraine and the outside world. Around 146 companies have registered here in order to conduct business with separatist eastern Ukraine. Many of them register business addresses at this hotel, which still bears the scars of war. What most surprised me about my stay in South Ossetia was the hospitality and warmth of a people hostage to geopolitics. They remained deeply suspicious of the West, but welcomed a Western reporter, even though few were willing to criticize the current state of things on the record. 